What was your thoughts on the, you know, speaking of heavyweights, you know, uh, the Joshua Usyk? Uh, yeah, I mean that uh, that fight was a. Uh, it wasn't like Joshua got blown out, but it was like, man, the guy was uh, was had a challenge and he didn't overcome his, that challenge. Was, yeah. yeah. Um, I I think Usyk is is that good. Me personally, I think um everything that Joshua did or didn't do had everything to do with what Usyk was doing. Mm-hmm. Um, Usyk was setting traps all night from the beginning. Usyk made uh, Joshua break down in height wise. Um, uh, he made him pay every time he came short of missing. Um, he showed a lot of heart at times when he approached uh, AJ. And then when he would pull back with good distance, um, he circled AJ at times. Whenever any time that he thought he was hurt or wasn't feeling right about a, from a certain punch, he would move a little bit, then get back grounded and go back to work. I think all of that creates a problem for uh, anybody, especially for someone that is not used to that kind of style coming from a southpaw standpoint. So it's like AJ had a lot to deal with in there that night. The only thing I could say that um, didn't happen is not one time did I see him impose himself. One time, even if it was for 10 seconds, just to say I'm the big man, I'm going to be big and I'm going to be, you know, intentful and I'm going to impose my... He didn't do that one time, but I believe also that's to the credit of Usyk. I think Usyk is that good that he 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 subtracted that. He took that away. He took that away. And um, you know that's that's top level boxing, though, man. That happens at the top of the game. It, 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 that was only an upset to people, in my opinion, that don't know boxing. If people know boxing, that is not considered no upset to me. I don't consider this an upset. What we are about to do Saturday night. I just don't. Deontay is the hardest puncher in the history of the sport. He has got nothing but getting better. It's a real upset if he beat Tyson Fury. No, it's really not. Buster Douglas beating Mike Tyson was an upset. Buster never looked that good in his life. Mike Tyson was the scariest man on the planet that time. No one expected it. Buster Doug got motivated. He shocked the world. That's shocking the world to me. Like this right here is just, you know, it's boxing, mm-hmm. you know? And we about to be very violent <laughs> and come, uh, come Saturday night. And I can't wait, man. So it's good. You know, the, the contrast, uh, the comparison and contrast, you know, you got Joshua, you know, he he was dealing with a technical guy, you know, and, and, and now you, we have Wilder, he's dealing also with a technical guy, but there is, a, the difference is that Wilder has that go get and kill the mentality, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that, and I see, it's, it's kind of like I was trying to compare that's both what first. actually AJ needed against right, Usyk. Right. But if that's not in you, if that's not what you do, I don't expect you to do that. I've never seen AJ be behind in the fight and knock somebody out cold. I've never seen him be in a fight and literally clip somebody and they out cold on the ground. Like, you know, that's just not who he is. That's never been in his makeup. Like, you know what I mean? He, you know, that's just not, but but Deont- that is who Deontay Wilder is. Like, you know what I mean? So any given round, if he's perfect for two seconds, you out of there. Just like that, because it's guy given. AJ never had guy given power like that. Never did. He, had, he got great technique. He could put punches together like better than any big man in the division to me. Um, uh, he, he has a lot of good attributes. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. I don't know. When you put him in there with somebody that really, really knew what they're doing from a scientific standpoint with heart, just it seemed like, I don't know. Because his opponents who he loses to don't have shit in common. <laughs> you know what I mean? Besides one thing, that they all are under him. It's like if you put AJ with someone that's height, he does better. Dylan White hurt him and it was in a tough fight with him. Dylan White is under him. AJ is taller. Ruiz is even shorter than Dylan White. He stops AJ. Mm-hmm. Another short guy. Considered short compared to AJ. Alexander Usyk, smaller guy. He damn near stopped AJ in the 12th round. You put somebody in there 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, with AJ, he'll probably do better. But it comes across like when someone is under him and they know what they're doing, he have problems with him. And let me, so that that style, uh, you know, he's dealing with his coaches from the uh, Olympus amateur coach system. Uh, is it is it that you do you think the guy is like can he actually adjust to this guy Usyk? I mean, that's that's my last you know on that. Mm, I think so. I, like you know, people keep saying that Robin McCracken is an amateur trainer and stuff like that, mm. but it's like they wasn't saying that when he was in the corner and AJ beat Vladimir. They wasn't saying that when he was in the corner. And AJ beat Dylan White. They wasn't saying that when AJ beat Joseph Parker. They wasn't saying that when AJ beat Carlos Topham. But now when he lose, it's always this thing that is trainer, trainer, trainer. And I'm not a big fan of that. I think my logic is this. If someone win a fight, 
they, they still showing imperfections, but you don't really hear no one say that they need to switch trainers. It's almost like the more high up level you are in the game. And I know that the game is designed for financial reasons, especially for trainers out here, because everybody want a high profile fighter so they can make the big buck or whatever it is. And I get that. But we gotta stop. We, we just have to stop with that when someone lose or when someone uh, like we go right to you got to get rid of the trainer. No, Rob McCracken is a good trainer. If anything, keep McCracken and bring on some help. Don't get rid of McCracken. Bring on some help with somebody that he can have good that he can have good uh, rhythm with. He can have good chemistry with. And then them too, they just bring on some help. You got to get rid of McCracken all of this time. In my opinion, if he ain't get rid of McCracken after all of this time, he shouldn't. He shouldn't get rid of him. He had great success with that guy in his corner. Great success. Like why? Why? Because the world of boxing and the world of critiques just say that. So when he lost to Ruiz, people was yelling that. He got to get rid of McCracken. But then when he come back and beat Ruiz, then come back and beat Pulev. No one is saying he got to get rid of McCracken. It's just not fair, like to me. And I'm a man of fear. I'm a man of like, you know, if something right is right. McCracken never did nothing wrong to him that he disagreed with to me. They never had no no type of, I don't know. It just seemed like when AJ had really, really off days, the first thing they say is get, but they would say that he's high profile. And it's really most trainers say that, if you notice. Like, it's always like other trainers that saying that type of shit. And, you, know, and, you know, I just don't trust that coming from other trainers. Like, you know, I just don't, man. That's just my logic. I think if anything, he could bring on some help. And um, collectively, they'd have to come up with a better game plan to beat Alexander Usyk or to be worse out for him next time because Usyk is not going to do nothing but gain more confidence and get better from that. He's not going to decline. He's going to, like, you know what I mean? He's going to, he's not going to regress. And that's going to be very dangerous for AJ if you don't, you know, collectively come up with a game plan with this team.